Why do not I got two hits on? Hello and welcome to Formula First TV, proudly brought to you by CMS Limited for coverage of round four of the High Q Components New Zealand Formula First Championship here at Manfield Circuit to aim on. And uh, as always, we've got our local Formula First expert, Jonathan Morton, with us this weekend. And Jonathan, uh, round four, the Grand Prix uh, with the Toyota Racing Series, and we're here to put on the big show, really. Yeah, absolutely. We're here to upstage them once again, exactly like we did last year. Yes, so uh, looking forward to some more, more fantastic action from the Formula First crew. And uh, with qualifying this, uh, this morning on uh, Saturday, it, uh, it really didn't get started until about halfway through the session. Yeah, they all sort of went out and it probably took about three minutes before they actually came around to start their first laps. Everybody was jostling for position to try and get the crucial toes. Yeah, of course, they all want to sort of be doing their laps at the uh, the same time, but uh, sort of three laps into it, we finally started getting some uh, really fast times. Yeah, they sort of all broke apart and then finally got back together and, and just got down to business of, of setting the best lap time they possibly could. Yeah, we did, we did have that big train in the end and it was... Uh, Brody McConkey, who uh, who came came back in his car that he lent out last weekend, that uh, managed to snare pole. Yeah, I think Brody should probably thank Chris for, for running in and getting him set, set up for him this weekend. And he's been fast from the outset this weekend, and he was the man that, that got the right draft at the right time to, to get the pole position, and a very fast pole position too, into the 22s. Yes, and it was uh, our championship leader, uh, Reese Hendelcox, who was on P2 on the front row, but Chris Simon just lacking a bit of pace this weekend. Yeah, they've obviously had to quickly rebuild that engine after his problems uh, before last meeting that he had here at Manfield on the test day, and they're a little bit off the pace, but with, with Chris's now in the race, I'm sure he'll be able to get through and up to the front. And with the good set for race 10 of the championship, all eyes were on the front pack as they were set to duke it out for the race, but Jonathan, it just ended up with two of them really. Yeah, unfortunately we failed to live up to last year's sort of thriller of, of five or six cars all jostling for position every corner of every lap. And it was just the front two who got away from the front row well, that being Brody McConkey and Reese Hendelcox. And they, they just fought amongst themselves. And, and the, the pack, which was right in behind, of course, of Billy Fraser, Liam Foster, Amy Smith and Chris Simon, who managed to, to move forward off the grid, couldn't really do anything. Yeah, they just sort of hung in behind and, and sort of formed a train jostling amongst themselves. But... Yeah, in the end it was uh, Reese Hindlecox who actually managed to gain the upper hand at the end of the race and uh, come out on top. Yeah, he, he let Brody lead coming into the last, onto the back straight, and he looked like he might have been too far back, but he just went, drove around the outside of him and Dunlop on the last turn and managed to snatch the victory from away from Brody. An absolutely brilliant move there from Reese Hindlecox, who uh, snared a fiver for, uh, of wins for the season all in a row. Um, but there was pad really, there was battles all throughout the field, wasn't there? Yeah, while it wasn't the big battle pack, it was still, every, if they separate themselves out and they have, have good battles everywhere, and that's what we like to see, is guys out there having a go for, and fighting for every position on track. And so here we are, Sunday morning of Grand Prix Day, and uh, big overnight news, Jonathan. Yeah, once again, the uh, Saber Motorsport karting challenge was on last night, and once again, the, the crew made it 5 0 over the drivers, so. <laughs> well done to the Saber Motorsport crew. No surprises, really. Oh, exactly. I the mean, epic teamwork. The drivers are a bit slack with the uh, teamwork there, but anyway. They probably should be in the cars today. Yeah, probably. But anyway, racing, race 11 of the championship, another epic duel. Grand Prix morning, setting the tone for the weekend, and uh, they delivered. Yeah, there was a, a tight five at the front that managed to break away and make a gap, and, and they fought it out amongst themselves. Um, fortunately, Hep and Thomas Boniface ran off, with, and also Nathan Sudiano, so that's sort of what split the pack up a little bit, but they set up themselves up in the groups early and just fought it out to the end. Yeah, so it was a, a real tight five up the front. Um, Boniface and Sudiano actually clawed their way back to get a top ten finish, which is really good for them, and... Uh, but really good to see that the close racing up the front, not giving an inch, but still uh, nice and clean. Yeah, they got back to going too wide through Dunlop, too wide through Toyota, too wide through Splash. So they were back into the close form of the first racing that we experienced here at the last Grand Prix meeting. Yeah, so the crowd really enjoyed it, but uh, a new winner for this season in, in young Billy Fraser here. Yeah, it was good to see that we added another, another bloke to our winners list. And going forward, that's sort of probably leapfrogged him back in the championship contention. 
And with Reese Hendelcox in second, he extends his championship over perhaps what you'd call an ailing Chris Simon this weekend. Yeah, unfortunately he wasn't able to hold on to the front pack and he fell back with the, with the second bunch. So he finished a disappointing sixth for him. But he'll be looking to, you know, keep, get through this weekend and then rebuild going forward. And it's just about sort of damage limitation at the moment. And again, great work on Liam Foster getting a podium. Yeah, Liam Foster shot up and he was in that battle the whole way and managed to make a good move to, to get the podium. And uh, all, sharing the, all sharing the lead at some point in the race and hopefully in uh, race 12 maybe we'll see some more epic action. So here we are, Sunday evening of the New Zealand Grand Prix, where our good friend Jonathan Morton has disappeared on us. He's off celebrating with Liam Lawson. Uh, congrats, Liam, by the way. Uh, but race 12 of the championship for the New Zealand Formula Firsts was an absolute epic battle out front. From the get-go, we had seven cars up the front, which included uh, Billy Fraser, Liam Foster, uh, Amy Smith, Thomas Boniface, unfortunately those two came into a bit of a clash halfway through uh, which meant that uh, Amy Smith went off the track and unfortunately later on the, the stewards decided that um, Thomas Boniface had actually relegated him back because he apparently caused the accident uh, which left us with a fantastic four and duke it out, well they do, certainly did Brodie McConkie trying to control the pack from the front from Reese Hendelcox, Liam Foster and Billy Fraser and even though we had a car, Liam Nicholson, unfortunately he went off at turn one, but the uh, officialdom got him out of the car, got him to safety, and they let us race, which was just great to see, especially in front of the big crowd that we had at Manfield Circuit to aim on. And so towards the end of the race, the four duke it out, four wide, side by side through splash, a pass in the grass even, well, an attempt anyway from Reese Hendelcox. It was really great to see. But uh, in the end, it was uh, Reese Hendelcox who took the victory from Brody McConkie and Liam Foster. And so with all the racing done here on Sunday evening, it's time to have a look at our championship overall. And uh, But first, the CMS Hard Charger Award. And this week, with uh, Jonathan still celebrating, uh, I get to give it out this, this week, and it's going to go to, I reckon, the Manfield officials, especially the ones up top that make the decisions about the race, because twice over the weekend we had accidents on track. They got the drivers out of the cars, they got them to safety, and they let our races carry on hard-paced green flag conditions, which is just fantastic to see, and they really need to be recognised for that, that and their wonderful effort. Now onto the championship updates and the Sunset Award. Well, unfortunately, Ron Carter was the only one here this weekend and without the likes of Dave Scammell and Bob Dillow here, so he extends his points lead in, in that championship. Rookie of the Year, though... Rookie of the Year, though, well, that's getting closer. With only nine points in it... Sorry, nine and a half points in it due to the shared points from the tie last week, last round. It's an ever-close battle between the two rookies, Thomas Boniface, who leads out Rona Murphy, the Speed Sport Scholarship winner. And in the overall championship, Rhys Hendelcox leads by now a comfortable 100 points, which is he's really taking a good stranglehold on the uh, on the championship this year. Chris Simon, unfortunately a bit of a duff round this, this weekend, and he's, ne he's now lagging back in second and really getting chased down by third, fourth, and fifth, who are all, who are all within 100 points-ish of him, uh, which is really great to see from the championship being so close. And with our championship hotting up, make sure you uh, follow us here at the F Formula First Facebook page for constant updates as we're back out, in, out at Manfield, Circuit Damon, 
well actually they're not, not where I am now uh, and we'll have coverage of round five of the championship in two weeks time, see you there